Attention, this video may cause uncontrollable cringe, so keep yourself together. Or at your own risk, you might experience secondhand embarrassment. Hey, stop. What are you doing here? Hmm. The weather is so bad today. Everyone is so sick, so I'm taking your temperature. Temperature? Of a person? With a pyrometer? Yeah, that's right. Um, Do you even know what that is? Emission coefficients. Infrared expansion? Hmm. No. Well then, let's go. I'll explain. So, hello, friends. If for some reason you need to measure the temperature of an object in a non-contact way, but you also don't know what emission coefficient and infrared expansion are, then I'll tell you. And at the same time, I'll show you three such pyrometers with different temperature ranges, emission coefficients, and infrared expansions. So what is this emission coefficient? The emissivity coefficient of an object is a measure of its ability to emit infrared light. It describes how effectively the object emits IR energy compared to an ideal black body, which absorbs 100% of IR radiation incident upon it. The emissivity coefficient can range from zero to one, zero, an ideal black body that absorbs all incident infrared radiation and emits none. One, an ideal emitter that emits 100% of incident infrared radiation. So, as you can see, it's not enough to just point a pyrometer at an object. You also need to know the emissivity coefficients of the object, because it's not for nothing. The pyrometer is infrared. And, by the way, the laser. In it, it's just a pointer. It doesn't measure anything. And here we move on to the question of what infrared expansion is. By the way, it's indicated on every pyrometer. But here, everything is as simple as possible. IR spot ratio is the relationship between the diameter of the measurement spot on the object and the distance from the pyrometer to the object. For example, a pyrometer with an infrared spot ratio of 20 to 1. At a distance of 1 meter from the object, the pyrometer will measure the temperature of a spot with a diameter of 20 millimeters. At a distance of 2 meters, the measurement spot will be 40 millimeters in diameter. Well, we've covered the theory. Now let's move on to practice and test all the pyrometers. We will be using this type of heating element, which will be powered by a power supply. And accordingly, we'll measure its readings. And by the way, measure. We will also use a thermocouple and not the heating element itself, but its casing, which is made of stainless steel with an emissivity coefficient of approximately 0.12. This is a simple budget pyrometer. Unite, 300A+, plus, with a resolution of 10 to 1 and a temperature range from minus 20 to 400 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, the emissivity coefficient here is not adjustable, and it is 0 0.95. The next device is more advanced. Its measurement range is from minus 32 to plus 1100 degrees Celsius, and the infrared resolution is 20 to 1. That is, from a distance of 1 meter, we have a spot with a diameter of 2 centimeters, and the emissivity coefficients are adjustable from 1 to 10 to 1. And finally, the most powerful device is the Unit Butte 305C. It truly has serious specifications, from minus 50 degrees Celsius to 2200, and optical resolution 55 to 1. And of course, the emissivity coefficients can also be adjusted here. In addition to recording measurement results in internal memory, it can also be connected to a computer via USB. Disclaimer, another one. These pyrometers are not medical devices and are not intended for measuring human body temperature. All actions shown are demonstrated exclusively for entertainment purposes. Now let's measure human body temperature. For example, the forehead has emissivity coefficients of 0.95 to 0.98. Go ahead, measure it. And with that, our video comes to an end. Choose your devices correctly, and if you're in doubt, we'll help you. Stay healthy and see you next time.